Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scaretube before here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tour we'll be going ahead and building the FV-103 Spartan. The FV-103 is a tracked armor personnel carrier of the British Army. It was developed as an armor personnel carri carrier variant of the combat vehicle reconnaissance family. The vehicle can carry up to 7 personnel including 3 crew members and it is armed with a single machine gun. The vehicle itself is almost indistinguishable from the FV-102 Striker in, appear in external appearance. Uh, the FV-103, rather uh, than a general per personnel carrier for infantry, the Spartan has been used for moving specialist teams such as anti-aircraft missile teams. There is an anti-aircraft variant of the Spartan that has been produced named the FV-120 Spartan MCT. This is armed with a Milan anti-tank missiles and uh, in total nearly 500 Spartans have served with the British Armed Forces and since entering service in 1978. They are now being replaced by newer uh, vehicles. So uh, overall this uh, APC is a really interesting vehicle. It's one of those APCs that you don't see get much love, um, that's for sure. And uh, it's a very interesting APC too. So. Uh, it was a fun little build to do and a cool little addition to our British lineup. We don't have too many British vehicles, um, so it's nice to get another one thrown into the mix. Now, this is partially kind of a Patreon request. I'm not sure because it's not the exact model the uh, person requested. As you can see in the background, we have a kind of custom um, design tank, which is based off of an anti-aircraft system. It's basically taking a Spartan and putting a Raper uh, or a Rapier, uh, something like that. Uh, missile system on it, which uh, doesn't actually exist, but it's definitely a plausible design So that's something that um, We'll be covering as a tutorial along with this I just thought that you guys would like to enjoy the standard version of the vehicle before we get into a uh, Not really uh, not a realistic or not, I would say realistic, but not an actual uh, You know built vehicle, uh, but it's definitely a vehicle that does have some realism to it um, so a special thanks to Patreon supporter uh, Brick Bros 2016 for making um, this tutorial possible. Anyways, uh, going ahead and uh, taking a look at this, uh, you know, vehicle. It's uh, pretty cool. Got a lot of detail jammed back into it, and it's actually kind of a smaller uh, little APC. I was actually kind of surprised how small it was. Can look at the pictures. It looks like a decent size, but it's actually quite small. So, start off with obviously with the front up here. Nothing too fancy in terms of. Um, detailing up there, just uh, you know, front headlights, um, tow hooks, and all that fun stuff. Venting on the front here. Uh, we also have some two smoke rate dispensers, so one over here and one also over here. We have the hatch here for the driver. Continuing on along the side here, just the tracks themselves. Uh, some detailing on the sides here, little um, openings here for um, obviously the uh, troops inside to be able to look out of the APC, or um, might even be little gun slits or something like that. Who knows? Um, as I know some APCs have those. Uh, up on top here we have obviously the commander's hatch equipped with a machine gun. This is kind of based off my 50 cal model but it uh, looked a little bit better on here than just a smart machine gun. So I put a 50 cal but obviously you can switch it out for my kind of standard 7.62 millimeter machine gun design. Uh, lots of detail on top here. Um, again, you know, just a bunch of uh, detail on top, hatches, all that kind of stuff. Uh, moving to the back here, you got your brake lights, obviously, the rear hatch here for the crew to get in and out, radio antenna, and that's pretty much the uh, main gist of it. Uh, overall, it's a really interesting, cool vehicle, and one of those vehicles, again, that's really overlooked and would definitely uh, definitely deserve a little bit of a spotlight. So, uh, anyways, that's going to do it for the overview. Let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer 1. Alright guys, moving on to our first layer, we have layer 1. For layer 1, we're going to go ahead and get started with the tracks by placing down another brick slab, followed by another brick top slab coming off the slab like so. After that, we're going to place down a green stain clay block coming back from the another brick slab, followed by two dark oak wood stairs, so one like this and one right behind it like so. We then want to place down another green stain clay block, followed by again another dark oak wood or another two dark oak wood stairs back to back like that. After that, we're going to place down another green stain clay block, followed by another another brick slab and another another brick top slab. We then want to go ahead and place down an item frame on these three green stain clay blocks with a green stain clay block in the item frame and a stone button also on the side of this green stain clay block to go ahead and create the road wheels like so. 
with that all done, we're going to go ahead and go to the middle space here. We're going to place down a row of three of dark oak with top slabs coming off this narrow brick slab here uh, in whatever direction you want the front of the tank facing. So we're going to have it facing that way. So we're going to have the three dark oak with top slabs there near the front. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and go back here to this narrow brick slab here. We're going to place down a row of three of narrow brick slabs to the side like so. Once that's all done, we're going to go basically uh, copy what we did for the tracks just over here to this side. So it's going to be the same exact thing. You're just basically copying what you did on the other side. So we're going to do it a little bit faster here. Um, obviously, if you if I'm going a little too fast for you, you can feel free to pause the video and just copy the other side. Um, do whatever works best for you. Uh, but it's the same exact thing on the other side here. And obviously, the road wheels, item frames, green snakeway blocks, all that stuff. And that's good to go there. Lastly, uh, we're going to go and take our dark oak wood slabs and basically fill in rows of top slabs in between these uh, rows of three here to curl the, fill in the base here of the vehicle. And um, once you have that all complete, that is going to do it for layer number one. With that, we can move on to our next layer, layer number two. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we're going ahead and move on to layer two. For layer two to begin with, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair on top of those two narrow brick top slabs, followed by a sign to the side of the stair. Same thing over here on this side as well, just like that. Once that's done, coming off the front of the stair, we're going to place down a black banner on both sides, followed by a row of three of green stained clay across in between these stairs and a tripwire hook on both sides, just like that. Once that's all done there, we're going to take our green stained clay blocks, place down a row of five all the way across here, going back, followed by a stone bun on the sides and an iron frame with a green stained clay block in it. And same thing over here to this side as well, like so. Once that's done there, we're going to place down a row of three green stained clay. This time it's going to be a row of uh, three and a dark oak wood upside down stair on both sides like so. Also on the side of this dark oak wood stair, we're going to place down a sign. And same thing here on both sides like that. Going ahead and continue on, we're going to place down another row of five of green stained clay going all the way across. Again, a sign on both ends like this, like we did for the dark oak wood stairs, like that on both sides. Once that's done, we're going to take our narrow brick slabs. We're going to place down a row of what is going to be one, two, three, and four. Narrow brick slabs back. Same thing over here. One, two, three, and four. And in the space in between these slabs, we're just going to go ahead and fill it in with rows of three of green stained clay. So we should have a total of four new rows of three of green stained clay fill in the space in the middle. Once we have that done, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of green stained clay that goes back like this, followed by a narrow brick top slab on both sides. Um, once that's done, we're going to place down a row of five of green stained clay. That's going to go all the way across like so. We're going to place down a item frame on both ends. That's going to have a cobweb in the item frame. So it's just going to be like this on both sides for the sprocket wheel. And then a, a stone button over it or on the green stained clay block like that to kind of complete the look there for the wheel. After that's done there, we're going to place down a narrow brick stair on top of these two narrow brick top slabs. To the side of the stair, we're going to place down a sign. And to the other side, obviously, we're going to do the same thing. A sign on the side there. Coming off the uh, front of the stairs, we're going to place down a wooden trap door. Just like that, going toward the back. We then want to place down a trip bar hook on these two green stankway blocks to both sides here. And in the middle space, we're actually going to swap this green stankway block out for a spruce wood plank with a stone button coming off it like that for uh, the back hatch there. And with that all complete, that is going to do it for... Uh, layer number two with that we can move on to layer number three. Alrighty guys moving on to our next layer We'll be moving on to layer number three For layer three we're going to start off by placing down a wooden trap door Which is going to be on top of these two green stankway blocks just like this Coming off the side of the, the uh, wooden trap door we'll place down an item frame with a glass block in the item frame like that for the front headlights We're also going to place down a rail that's going to go in between the two wooden trap doors So you get something that looks just like that after that's done we're going to place down a row of three of dark oak with slabs across we then wanted to take our take a zombie head and we're going to place down a zombie head on this green stink we block to the left side here at a 45 um, degree, degree angle. So it may take some messing around with me. We want a zombie head angled about that angle right there. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a narrow brick slab. We're going to place down a narrow brick top slab coming off this uh, row of three of dark oak wood slabs to the right side. And then a wither skeleton skull come off the slab toward the front. So you can kind of see here we have a little bit of a difference on what we have on both sides here. Just make sure that that is correct. Once that's done, continue on. We're going to place down another row of three of green stained clay. Going across the middle here. Followed by a dark oak wood stair on both sides like that. And we actually want to go ahead and swap this stone, this dark oak wood slab out here for a stone brick uh, slab. And we're also going to swap this uh, green stained clay block here to the right with a uh, stone brick full block. 
After that's done, uh, we're going to go and continue on working our way back by taking our green stain clay blocks. We're going to place down a row of five across, followed by a tripwire hook on both ends. That's not a tripwire hook. There we go. Tripwire hook on both ends. We then want to place down another row of five of green stained clay going across. This time we're going to leave it blank. A third row of five of green stained clay across. Again, a narrow trip bar hook. A row of five of green stained clay, no trip bar hook. You kind of get a pattern. We, you kind of see the pattern we have going on here. So we're basically doing a row of five uh, without trip bar hooks on the ends and then a row of five with them. Um, so we're going to do this one more time here. Like this going all the way across. Like that. And you get something that kind of looks like that all the way around there. Once uh, that's all done, we're then going to place down a dark oak wood upside down stair. That's going to be on top of this narrow brick stair here on both sides. Uh, after that's all complete, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair that, that's upside down that comes off the stair. So we turn it into a corner stair. Same thing over here, like so. In this space in the middle here, we're actually going to place down a spruce wood plank that goes up like this, followed by a lever on the side of the spruce wood plank. We also want to go ahead and go into the creative menu. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a item frame and also some red stained glass and also a wooden sign for this on the back here we're going to place down our brake lights by placing down a item frame on the dark oak wood upside down corner stair red stained glass block in the item frame a sign that kind of covered up like so and you get something that looks like that for the back there uh, with that all done that is going to wrap up layer number three and with that we can move on to our next layer layer number four all right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, we're going to start off by placing down a redstone comparator on top of this uh, narrow brick top slab. Once that's done, we're going to place down a rail that's going to be on top of this stone brick full block. After that, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a redstone repeater, place down a redstone repeater on top of this green stained clay block, flip the notches out to the sides like so. And we're also going to place down a narrow brick slab on top of this dark oak wood stair. Coming off the slab toward the front, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull and then a dark oak wood fence gate coming off this. Uh, narrow brick slab like so uh, with that all done we're going to go ahead and go back from this redstone repeater by placing down a spruce wood slab we then want to place down a dark oak wood slab next to it and then a stone brick slab over here to the right side uh, we're then going to go ahead and grab ourselves a zombie head and over here on the right side we're going to place down a zombie head at about a 45 degree angle next to the stone brick slab with that all done we're going to take our green stain clay blocks place down a row of three across fall by a dark oak wood stair like this on both sides make sure the stair is facing toward the front going ahead and uh, going back uh, from this we're going to go and grab ourselves a green stain clay block place down a green stain clay block in the middle here followed by a spruce wood plank on both sides of that green stain clay block once that's done we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair on the very sides here creating a dark oak wood corner stair with the previous plate stair uh, we then want to place down a row of three of green stain clay across followed by a dark oak wood upside down stair so the dark oak wood upside down stair is going to be facing this direction uh, just like that upside down and on the sides here we're going to go and need to go into the creative menu again grab ourselves a item frame and we're also going to need a black wool block we're going to place down an item frame on the side of the stair black wool block in the item frame sign over it like so same thing over here just like that once that's done we're going to place down a row of three of spruce wood planks going across the middle here followed by a regular dark oak which down both sides we then want to place down a second row of three of spruce wood planks. Again, going across the middle here, fall by again a dark oak wood upside down stair. Uh, upside down on uh, the side here to look something like this. For the little viewport here, we're going to place down an item frame over it, black wool block, sign over it like so. Same thing over here, item frame, black wool block, in the item frame, and a sign to cover it up like so. After uh, that's all done there, we're going to place down a spruce wood plank on top of this one right here in the middle, fall by a green stain clay block on both sides of it. And then we just want to place down a dark oak wood stair on both ends like so. On the very back here, we're going to place down a green stain clay block on top of this dark oak wood upstone stair on both sides of the door. On the spruce wood plank here in the middle, we're going to place down a lever, flick it downwards like so. We then want to place down a mossy cobblestone wall on uh, top of this upside down corner stair on both sides here. Um, coming off the green stain clay blocks. And also coming off this side here, the green stain clay blocks, we're going to place down a sub wooden sign on both sides just like that. With that all done, that is going to pretty much wrap up layer number five. With that, we're going to move on to our last final layers. Or sorry, my bad, that was actually layer number four. Uh, with that, we're going to move into our final layers. Layers five, six, seven, uh, eight, and nine. We're going to put the antennas on, all the top details, and pretty much wrap this build up. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer. We're going to head to move on to our final layers. Actually, sorry, layers five through nine. 
For these layers, to go ahead and get started, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab on top of the spruce wood plank over here on the left side. We then want to place down a dark oak wood upside down stair that's coming off the spruce wood slab like that going toward the front. Coming off the front of the stair, we're going to place down an item frame with a black stained glass block in it, or, or stained glass pane in the uh, item frame like so for the front there. Around uh, the sides here, so the left side of the spruce wood slab, we're going to place down a zombie head like this and also on the back here. However, to the right of it, if you want to include the machine gun mounted on top here, you can place down a dark oak wood fence post and a fence gate back. If you want to just have the cupola up on top here, you can just place down a zombie head like we did over here, just on that side, and uh, exclude the gun. Uh, for this version, however, we'll be putting the machine gun mounted, so we're going to have the mount set up here. We then want to place down a stone bun on this spruce wood plank here. We're going to place down a zombie head on this green stink wood block facing forward, followed by a zombie head to the side here at a slight kind of like 30 degree angle. And same thing over here on this side, um, so you have these little uh, different uh, view ports here. Uh, with that all finished, we're going to go and continue on by placing down a redstone repeater on this green stink wood block. We then want to take stone buns, we're going to place down one and two stone buns along the sides here, one and two, just like that. In the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves levers, place down two levers facing each other like so. Make sure that you fix the uh, dark oak wood fence gate, close it up if it does decide to open from uh, having to change the direction of the lever. Also on the back here, we're going to place down a row of three of green carpet that goes across. And we also want to place down a green carpet on top of these dark oak wood upside down stairs. Uh, we then want to place down a dark oak wood fence post on top of these two uh, dark oak wood uh, stairs. And then we're going to go up with one, two, three, and four iron bars up from those dark oak wood fence posts. Same thing over here. One, two, three, four uh, up like that for the radio antennas. Last thing for us to do is to go ahead and put the machine gun on. Uh, so it's pretty standard. If you guys have done a few of my tutorials, you're pretty familiar with how I do these machine guns. So we're going to grab ourselves a dark oak wood fence gate, a anvil, a sign, a nether brick stair, a end rod, a redstone repeater, a green carpet, a dark oak wood top slab, and we can go ahead and get started here. So for this, we're going to place down the anvil on top of this dark oak wood fence gate here. We may need to actually break this lever so that we can actually place down a dark oak uh, fence gate that's coming off the anvil facing toward it like that for the back of the gun here. If that's the case, just go ahead and uh, fix the lever, place it back, and um, you're pretty much good to go. So you should have something that looks like this. Coming off the anvil toward the front, we're going to place down a narrow brick upside down stair, followed by two end rods like that that go toward the front there for the barrel of the gun. On the right side of the anvil, we're going to place down a sign. Over here to the left side, we're going to place down a dark oak wood top slab with a green carpet on top. And the start top slab is coming off the nether brick upside down stair. On top of the nether brick upside down stair, we're going to place down a redstone repeater and flick the notches all the way back as far as you can. So you get something that looks like that on top there for the sights of the gun. With that all complete, that is going to pretty much do it for the FV-103 Spartan Armor Personnel Carrier. Hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you guys do it using this design, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This may be from a silent build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear any social media sites. Just be sure to get proper credit for the build. That's all we ask for doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow. It continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of tutorials. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for projects you guys are working on. Other than that, that's going to do it for this video. Again, a big thanks to uh, Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this tutorial possible. And feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is down in the description where you can support the channel more than you already do. And it's uh, much appreciated if you do. Um, other than that, that's going to pretty much do it for this uh, tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett Twiff, and I'll see you guys next time.